Hey guys, this is Matt the Long Hair Little Guy and today I'm going to bring a video to you and it's going to be a tour of my shop. <laughs> Not really my shop, it's my garage and the projects that I've been doing for organization and how I'm going to get ready for the upcoming lawn season. So stay tuned for that after the intro. Alrighty guys, I've been kind of busy in my home garage shop getting things organized for next year's lawn season because that's one of the things that we do when we're not actually going out there and making money. We're getting prepared to make money. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's kind of like, you know, the calm before the storm except you get a little bit bored and you start finding things to do. Well during the long season you come in and, and you're tired and just kind of throw your things around i know how it is your workspace gets taken up next thing you know you're overcrowded and things are breaking down and you just don't know what to do about it it happens to me too guys so what i started with was getting organized everything's got to have a place and that was one of the things that i've never done i've never i've got my tools spread out everywhere and nothing ever had a place so i decided to use my garage because it's the only space that i have uh, to store my equipment and everything and all my tools and all that i decided to get it organized so that when the year comes around i know exactly where to put everything and everything's very easy to to find everything's very easy to put away uh, just a time saver and a headache saver and all that above now i will say this this is not the only space that i have i do have uh, a neighbor who is actually storing my larger mowers my zero turn and my toro pro line 32 so those are somewhere else but other than that all my small equipment my little mowers all that type of stuff is, is stored in the garage so if you guys are ready we are going to go around this garage and see what is possible or what you could possibly do if you're limited on space like i am uh, so here we go i'm going to start off with my workspace I know it might seem a little bit crowded, but it's really not. I got pegboard and I just got all my lawnmower blades up here and then I have all the rest of my tools up on pegboard. I've had this pegboard for years and just never done very good with it. The other thing I have down here is my shop vac. I would be moving this thing all over around uh, my garage and it would just always be in the way. Now it's got a spot and what I plan on doing is getting an extra large hose so this will reach everywhere in my garage so this will never have to leave. It just plugged in, I turn it on and then I just take the hose out and I just do whatever I want to do with it. Okay, I got a small toolbox here, I got a small toolbox here, uh, but that basically you guys get the gist of this. Check out my Craftsman fan for when it gets hot up in here. I got all my batteries up there. This used to be filled with used oil and antifreeze and all that type of stuff. I took all that to uh, my local hazardous uh, accumulation point in Oklahoma City and they were great. So anyways, uh, my bench grinder, uh, this is what I use to sharpen my blades, although now that Acme Bennett has that amazing sharpener, I might be going over there and seeing if I can't take advantage of some of that action over there. So anyways, guys, that's that. All right, nothing going on over here. This is nothing new. Uh, now, later on, I've actually, I did get some mail, so you're gonna have to wait to find out who I got it from, but uh, I can't wait to put that sticker up there in my community cabinet where I store all my, all my stuff. So I found a place I can hang my sprayers. I'm gonna get a second one of those, and it's probably gonna go right here, except what I think I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna build a shelf eventually to where they'll sit on the shelf because I'm not so sure I like how this is hanging from the, from the cap like that. Uh, and that's pretty well that cabinets just believe it, that's not organized yet so I'm not even going to open that and then over here I got my weed eaters they're hung up I just strung a two by four across the studs and then I put some of these uh, some of these little hooks in there and it seems to hold pretty well now the larger heads it's uh, you might have trouble with that because you might have to put another two by four or something underneath here to bring a little further away from the wall because I can't fit my 2620 like that it doesn't fit but everything else does so I got those hanging up right there. Um, I don't have anything to do with my, my blower at the moment. Uh, and I got these little things, these are neat. They're just like pole hooks. So the way they go is you just go up like this and it comes out. And then, trying to do this with one hand, and then just grabs on, it's pretty good. Now this has trouble staying on, I gotta be careful with that. And this is just temporary storage because I got my uh, trailer on base storage. So if you have access to base, that's an excellent place to store stuff cheap. Uh, so, uh, but that's where the trailer is right now. I got my line coming here and I've always had this shelf right here, but here's something that I did. I saw this on YouTube. 
stacking your mowers. I never thought about that in a million years until I saw it on YouTube and I'm like why didn't I think of that so when you're when you got a small space like I do this garage is only about uh, 20 feet wide so that's not very very big and you can barely even fit two cars in here and open the doors it just doesn't happen very well so you got to do what you can with your space so I decided to stack my mowers and all I do is frame it up put some plywood over it and there you have it and uh, eventually what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put another layer of shelving of a half shelf like this coming directly off of it. And I might put my gas cans up there to uh, open up this space. And then one day I, uh, I got locked out of my garage and I'm like, what am I gonna do? What the heck am I gonna do? So I saw all my hand tools, all my rakes and all the stuff that you see right here was just in a uh, 30 gallon or 33 gallon trash can that was all broken and busted. I didn't have any sand or anything in it to weight it down. So it was always falling over, falling over. And I got locked out of my house and I couldn't figure out what I was gonna do to get back in the house. And then I just decided to embrace the suck even though I was hungry and I didn't have access to food, no water, but I got to work. I used some of my scrap two by fours, I still got some down here, and I built this rack. So now nothing falls over. It's not perfect, uh, but I just used a hole saw, punched holes in there and put it in there and just framed it out and put some legs and kind of crazy. So, uh, and I'm not a particularly handy guy. I learn as I go and my neighbor came over while I was kind of piecing this together. And he goes, what you doing? And I said, uh, turn you around on me. I said, I'm building a, a storage rack for my, my rake and hand tool. He's like, you know how to do that? I was like, no. <laughs> no, I don't have any clue what I'm doing. I just had a picture in my mind and just kind of pieced it together. So those of you who are carpentry sorts, you might look at it and be like, I would have done that a little bit different. And I'd say, I bet you would. Uh, but uh, anyways, that was just what came together in my mind in about an hour. And I just had access to all my tools and just looking to organize. And that's what I did there. So uh, that takes this corner pretty well and it's fairly easy to move this in case I need to get back here uh, where my water heater is and uh, uh, in my furnace so that's back there behind that door and anyways uh, on to that speaking of the furnace it runs off of gas or my water heater does and if I could tell you a little bit of story is it's getting colder outside and we got a lot of kids in the uh, in the Bible study and they were getting pretty distracting so i was like how are we gonna put some separation between us and the kids while we're doing bible study and i thought about hey we used to do in the garage but it was really cold so i put it to the people in the group i said hey if i put some heat in the garage what did you guys think about doing bible study out in the garage and they said yeah sure so now we have this we have a wall heater a garage heater and this is made by ready heater it's just a wall heater. It's actually made for indoor use and it runs off of natural gas. I would love to get back here, uh, but I'll just kind of tell you a little bit. I might even have a little video popping up that I splice in so you can see what it looks like. But uh, all I did was I, I just tapped off of my natural gas line. I drilled through the wall and I put gas in there, natural gas. So it runs off of natural gas. The only thing that's electric, as you can see it plugs in here, is the fan. It's got a little bit of forced air that comes out. And this is a 30,000 BTU heater, uh, and it's, and it's uh, about twice as much power as I actually need for 400 square feet, which is what I'm dealing with. And it's pretty comfortable, and you can see it's only just a little bit over the two mark out of five. And it's pretty comfortable in here, guys. I mean, I could wear a t-shirt in here and, and feel just fine. So anyways, uh, heat. So now I have a heater garage. I've got storage for my mowers that, t that leaves a smaller footprint. I've got my tools. They all have a place. And then you may or may not have noticed in the last couple videos, because I don't, I don't tape a lot or record in my garage that much, but this was a dungeon of a place. So what I asked for for Christmas, I got an easy... Uh, uh, an early Christmas gift was shop lights. So if you can see that, this is my other project is because if I was going to record in here and I was going to do some work in here, I wanted to have better lighting. So I ordered these off of Amazon and each one of these fixtures is 4,800 lumen. Okay, so that's quite a bit and there's an equation online for the amount of square feet that you want and the intensity of your light and it tells you this is how much how many lumen you should have. Uh, so I think it was about 12,000 lumen is what was said was required for my space for what I wanted to do and these are 4,800 a piece and there's six of them. They're LED and something that's really really nice about these uh, is they're what they call linkable. So if you can see this one 
plugs into an adapter. I don't know how this is coming through on film, but it plugs in this adapter, okay, where the light socket goes. So it's also connected to the wall switch. So when I turn the wall switch off, watch. It's connected to my switch. So anyways, it plugs in there and then it comes over here and comes out the back of this one and then it plugs into this one, comes out the back and it plugs into this one. So they're all linkable. And it's coming off of two sides. So this one is linking into these two, okay? And then I just use these staples, these uh, electrical wire staples, and they're real easy to just put up in there. Uh, I know it's not the most sightly type of thing. You could actually go through the ceiling if you wanted to drill a hole in the ceiling and, and, uh, and you know, come in and out of the ceiling. Or if you're particularly electrically inclined, you could actually hardwire these things. But that's not what I chose to do. It's just my garage. It's not a big deal. I just wanted light. So that was that. And these lights, they worked out to be somewhere around about like like $18 a piece. It was $130 for six of them, and that's including tax and shipping and all that through Amazon. I may have even gotten shipping free. So anyways, guys, that has really lightened up this shop and it's wonderful. My wife loves it now because she can park in the garage because the trailer is not here and there's heat, so she doesn't get into a cold car anymore. So uh, I'm really excited. These are the improvements I've been doing on the garage and I'm really, really happy with it. We've been spending more time out here and I've really enjoyed this space. <laughs> So what's in the future for the garage? Well, have you ever, uh, or you, those of you guys that have a zero turn or a heavier mower, you know, more than just a push mower, how much do you like trying to prop the, the side of that, that or the, the front of that mower up to get the blades off or to clean your deck out, things like that? Yeah, me too. I can't stand it. I can't stand cleaning my deck. And a lot of times I'm not likely to sharpen my blades if I'm feeling a little bit lazy because I don't want to have to deal with holding my mower up, my zero turn. And what I was doing is I was using this cinder block, right, with a jack stand. So I was putting the jack stand on top of the cinder block. And then I was putting the jack stand underneath my mower. And I was kind of doing this little deal and kicking it over with my, with my foot. So I'm like, there's got to be an easier way. Well, you may have seen something on the ceiling when I showed you the lights. You see that little hook? What used to be there was my bike. And then I had another hook up here in this vacant hole where my bike hooked onto it with a, ro with a rope and then uh, uh, and, it, and it hung down from here. I had another little thing in my dad. But anyways, I use that to suspend my bike. But that is in a stud. I put a stud in my ceiling to support that weight. Now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to get a pulley, a rope system pulley, and hook it onto there. And then maybe on the wall I'll do like a fisherman's anchor or something like that over here. So then I can just run a hook down to maybe an eyelid on my imaginary mower right here, hook it on, pull the rope up, and anchor it to the wall. So then it's suspended, it's just easy. It's kind of like a, like a poor man's lift. So that's probably gonna be the next thing, or one of the next things on my list I'm gonna do before that, because that way it'll make it so much easier for me to get underneath that deck and see what it is that I'm doing. The other thing that I wanna do is, is related to the heat. My garage door is not insulated. This is really cold, or it can be really cold, but nonetheless, um, I'm losing a lot of my energy and uh, that heater is really efficient because it's natural gas, but I am losing that energy through my garage door. So for about $120, I believe, I can get a garage door insulation kit and I'm gonna put that. So those are the couple other couple things that I have going on in the garage, in the little guy's long garage, if you will. 
and that's what I've been doing with my time guys so anyways I hope you guys are finding ways to keep yourself busy I encourage you guys to get organized before the beginning of the season next year okay so maybe I'm thinking because some of my videos actually everybody's videos can tend to get a little boring when they're in the off season because they're just not doing that much. Everybody loves to see the sunshine and the birds chirping and mowing and the old grass grind, right? Sloans, if you're watching, I doubt you are. But anyways, if you are, you know, uh, you know, everybody's into that grass grind, everybody's into that, and that's exciting stuff. But in the off season, it tends to get a little bit more boring. So tell me what you guys are doing to get organized for next year's mowing season, so that you get off, get on, start your season on the right foot. Okay, so. Anyways, uh, that's going to do it for this part. Uh, the next thing that's coming up is going to be the community cabinet, and I can't wait to tell you who I got mail from. So stick around for that. Alrighty guys, it's mail time. I did get something in the mail this week and I'm super excited because it is Chuck B from Birch's Lawn Care. I, I can't help it, I got no self-control. I just tear these envelopes open because I get so excited. So I would love to get something from y'all if you're watching. Uh, BLC Lawn Care, he's got a great envelope, man. Usually I just put mine in a regular envelope, but he's got it going on with the marketing on that. So he's uh, got an excellent envelope and then he sent me a letter, says, hey Matt, keep uh, the great vids coming. I really enjoy watching your channel, Chuck. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Same to you, buddy. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you on the phone, and thank you also for your card and your sticker. I apologize, guys. This is like my third cut doing this, but the sticker's already up on the community cabinet, and here it is. You got to find it just the right spot. There it goes. There we go. So, Chuck B, man, where do you want to go? What's a good spot here? I'm saving this for a little bit, I'm gonna try and fill this up a little bit, or maybe I should start over there, I don't know. You know what, I'm gonna put you right here, Chuck, all right? If you fit. Oh, you're gonna fit beautifully. Uh, oh, come on now. There we go. Birches, lawn care. Amongst such notables as Acme would say, it is Acme mowing, uh, Eclipse lawn care, Mark. Red Rock, you got Scott up in Canada. Go check out Baldy's channels. Jay's Crazy Cuts, Wes's Lawn Mowing, Wyatt's Lawn Mowing Service, Caddo. Uh, Mower Man down in Texas, Midlow. Turf, Front Hayden Riggins, Rob's Odd Jobs, Conway One Way, Quick Cuts, and Cedar Knoll. And here is his card, guys. So it's an excellent card, and on the back of it, it's got mowing, aerating, everything that he does. And particularly something I'm interested in is the sprinkler blowouts and the uh, organic applicator. Not as much the organic, although that's cool. But when I was getting my license uh, and trying to interpret labels, I contacted him. He was a man I thought of, and he was very open with me, very willing to share him and himself and his business knowledge with me about applicating, and then also about sprinkler blowouts because I'd never done that before, and somebody requested that service from me and he was who I thought of because he's the only one I know is making videos on that. So anyways, uh, thank you Chuck B. I appreciate you man. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more videos from me, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and tap the bell for notifications anytime I drop a new video. It should be every other Sunday by 2 p.m. Also, visit my description below this video for links to my personal channel where I share my relationship with Christ, which is something that I'm very passionate about. And also, my address is in there if you'd like to send me any mail from my community cabinet. I'm at the Long Care Little Guy. Pray for me. You know I'm praying for you. Peace.